real quick before that motherfucker go down. You feel me? Hell yeah. You had sold that Bitcoin when it was at 60. You would have made, made bags, but niggas trying to hold it. Got greedy trying to set it at like 100. Now it's at like 40. Yeah, I, I just hold it anyway. I've been making money on Bitcoin. I've been making money on Bitcoin for the last two, three years. Okay. Bitcoin at four racks. I buy Bitcoin at four racks. Damn. I'm up, up from Bitcoin. Okay. Oh, Keep doing your thing, money man. Already. Okay. What's going on? What's good? Shit, man. man. Trying to get on that Bitcoin shit like you. Shit, what the hell you got going on with it? You ain't, you ain't start you no account or nothing like that? Hey, yeah, I had started a little account really just on some cash out shit. But I really just been stuck on that photography shit though, man. Yeah, get all cash out and go to Coinbase Pro or go to uh, Binance. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Just put something in. Get some extra money, put something in that motherfucker. And just run it up like that. Yeah, for sure. Cause you, unless you want to study that yeah, motherfucker. Going, man. Or, huh? What you say? Yeah, if you ain't gonna study the motherfucker, it ain't no point in doing this shit, man. You gotta put work in, you feel me? I got somebody getting added if they don't. There you go. What's up? The bundle, what's popping? No cap, if you don't, if really, if you ain't thinking like me, I'm not fucking with you. If you're not on what I'm on, I'm not fucking with you. You're not thinking how I'm thinking, I'm not fucking with you. Period. I don't care. Don't care. We can make some money together, but I'm not fucking with you. I don't want to kick it. I don't want to conversate if we're not on the same shit. We're not thinking the same. I don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, really quick, like five seconds. Um, first legal business, vending machines or ATMs? Either or. Either or. Which one yeah. do you think uh, is like a higher profit margin? Um, I don't. I'm not sure about ATMs profit margin. Like, what you get paid off the transaction? Uh, I'm guessing you just have to pay a fee. I know to the car companies, but. Most of the liquor stores in my area, like, they lease the ATM. I found that out, so I'm not sure yet. You, so you, 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 you would buy the ATMs and then the liquor store will lease it from you or the, the location will lease it from you and you get paid from them leasing it from you? Yeah, yeah, that as well, yeah. How much does the ATM cost? You you familiar? You know? I've seen ones in my area. I'm in SoCal. I've seen ones for $100. Like $100 to get an ATM? Yeah, just advertise like it's some mom and pop shops. Like, but I mean, most like if you buy them like online, like off like you know, legit site, it would probably be like I don't know, like as much as a vending machine. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I just wanted your advice on that. What I would do is I, I would look at profit margin, I look at how much each ATM costs, then I look at what each location gonna pay me, and I would add that up and see when I start making profit. Because, you know, you got to make back with the ATM costs, and then after that, you make profit. 
and then I look up how much the vending machine costs, and then I see which one is easier to um to get a location. It might be hard to put an ATM somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That's true. It might calculation, be, yeah. Yeah, it might be easier to put a vending machine somewhere. So I would just look at both of them. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for your time. All right. I mean, you supposed to be out here getting some money, man. No cap, man. I'm getting to the money right now. I'm having too much motion, man. I need to slow it down, man. I just heard somebody say, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, what did he just say? He said, if you're too busy, you can't be creative. So it's hard to be busy and creative. You feel me? And right now, I'm busy as a motherfucker, man. That money be blowing my phone up every day. Every day is some new money. What's going on? What's going on, my man? What's poppin'? Big fan of your music, man. 100. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, right now, man, I just got my, my DJ business going, man. How do you think I should go about that? I think you should got now find you an artist to DJ for or find you a poppin' club. You feel me? And okay. deep that motherfucker, you need to go get some practice. You, you are you, are you experienced in this shit? Well, no, nah, man, not really. But you know, my love for music that that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I look at it more so. I'm doing something that I love, and I'm making money off of it. You know what I mean? Well, you got to go get five first because you supposed to whatever you do, you supposed to be the best in it. You feel me? Right, like putting a thousand hours in whatever you need, right? Well, whatever you want to do, right? Exactly. And then look, you know, make playlists, playlist the new shit. Mixtapes ain't popping no more. It's playlists. And then get with one of these. Make a playlist and get your playlist popping and then charge niggas to get on your playlist. Okay, for sure, for sure. One one quick question, though, my man. One quick question. Um, the Coinbase. You said uh, try the Coinbase Pro, right? Yeah, yeah, Pro. Okay, all right. Good looking out, my man. All right. All right. Feeling kind of evil. I should probably go and pray today. Feeling kind of trappish. I might go and catch a play today. That's why I said Coinbase Pro. We have no Coinbase that I feed. Yo, 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 what's up? What's poppin'? All right, so um, I'm doing like a little YouTube business for them. So like, what do you think like the best way to like go about like getting it like popular? You know, like popping. Shit, God, uh, you need to pay for some advertisement for, for somebody to shout your YouTube out, or you need to interview somebody or something. It depends on what you got going on, what kind of motion you got on your page. Like, I upload pretty much like everything. I do like public interviews, like prank, like vlogs, all types of stuff. Oh, well, you need to go now. If you're doing interviews, you need to interview somebody who's slightly popping. You don't got to start off big. Start off with somebody with 20K followers. They they fans going to go subscribe, then move up. You know what I'm saying? It's a gradual yeah. process. Nothing happened overnight. So you need to have, and then you need exciting shit going on on your page that's going to make people come. You can't really do what everybody else doing unless you're doing what everybody else doing way better. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. So, like, you know, like, you talking about, like, the um, advertising, like, on, like, Instagram and shit like that? Now you can let's say you get an artist with twenty k followers, yeah. Um, shout his interview out on their page so all his fans can go look at your page and subscribe to you because they like what kind of motion you got going on on your page. You get what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So like, so like, and if you like somebody with like twenty k followers, whatever, and they go like post it on like page, whatever, then they go like follow yeah. me and shit. Tell them to put the link in their bio and shit like that, and and so people can go look at your page. Then if you can get ten percent and get you'll start getting subscribers. It's all about subscribers on that wall. Yeah, yep, yep. I feel you. I feel you. So I would do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the best way. And then make sure you have emotion on your page and then pay different little sites. Pay this site $5 to advertise your page. You know what I'm saying? Do YouTube yeah. advertisement. You got to put money in yourself. 
Yeah, yeah, but I feel you. Thanks, man, for the info. All right. All right, stay up. You got to invest in yourself, man. You don't invest in yourself, you ain't going to be shit. A lot of niggas want somebody else to invest in. Man. I see niggas come out and invest in me all the time, man. Invest in your motherfucking self. Why would I put it like this? Not even on no selfish shit. Why would I invest in you when I can invest in me and make quadruple the money? Why would I do that? I can just invest in my, I can take 100 racks, put it into myself and make 500. You know, so I can take 500 and put it in myself and make 2.5. Invest in yourself. Go get some startup money, invest in yourself. Forest, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I just, I don't, I don't do, I fuck with some stocks, put some money in some stocks or something. Invest in where, I don't know, you need to find you a talent. See, when I say invest in yourself, find out what you good at. Invest in yourself and make money off of it. Niggas wait too late to figure out what their talent is. You supposed to figure that motherfucker out when you 12 years old. When you 10 years old, you supposed to know what you good at. You 25 and you don't know what you good at. You feel me? That see, did what happened. When you 25 and you don't know what you good at, you start jumping in other folks' lane. You know what you become? You become three words. You become in the way. You get what I'm saying? Because you're trying to copy everybody else. You see this nigga over here, Rich. So you think you can do it, but you really can't. That ain't your move. You get what I'm saying? You know you know what you good at at 10 years old. In China, they give you a test, right? And they figure out what you good at when you four, five years old, when you hit elementary school, and they know what you're going to be then. Over here, niggas figure out what they're going to be at 30. They in somebody else's lane. You feel me? So guess what? You start jumping in everybody else's lane. You you this, you that. You know what I'm saying? You wasted your, you don't waste the 10 years of your life trying to be somebody else instead of yourself. You supposed to know what you're going to be early, start putting money into yourself, and then you start flourishing. You know what I'm saying? And then you make millions off whatever you're supposed to be. But everybody want to be somebody else and not they self. Everybody got some type of quality of gift. You need to figure out what your quality of gift is and you need to put money into that shit and do that. I'm just keeping it solid, you feel me? A lot of niggas gonna end up, see, a lot of niggas gonna end up got down 30 and going outside. You feel me? I just be trying to put y'all on to a little, a little song. What's up with my boy? What's poppin'? What you got going? Shit, just chillin'. Getting to the money. Hey, I got a um, business idea for you. What's good? Oh, uh, some 18 wheelers. Yeah, I fuck with 18 wheelers. It's just, it's hard finding reliable drivers. So, man, I'm, I'm trying to get me one, man. What, 18 wheeler? Yeah, yeah. I got I got my CDL. Yeah, if you drive it yourself, that's a good business. For sure, get about 10 bands a week. I mean, you probably ain't going to get that realistically. You get what I'm saying? For sure. Then everybody have an 18 wheel and be driving and making 40 racks a month and then making 480 racks a year. You get what I'm saying? For sure. So you got to think realistically. Realistically, it probably make like two, three. For sure. But hey, I'll fuck, I'll fuck with you too, man. I love for sure. Hello, my boy. All right. Y'all got to think. Y'all got to think in reality, too. See, I hear a lot of people talking about 18 wheelers make this and that. If 18 wheelers made that much money, nigga, I would be driving 18 wheelers when I was 18. Nigga, 40 racks a month. It's good money. Listen, I'm a millionaire. 40 racks a month is good money. 480000 a year. 
You feel me? So the niggas gotta get realistic too. <laughs> car wash. I would. I'm. I'm not starting no car wash. I'm. I'm sorry. It just. It just seemed like it takes too long to make some type of profit. Like it's not 1950. Niggas was starting car washes. Niggas who was selling got their hard was starting car washes just to wash their money. What up? What's happening? So I just want to say real quick that. Bro, you're a really big inspiration. One thousand, I love. Mm. Trying to tell you I'm how you've been handling this corona shit. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. I know how to adapt. Yeah, I just yeah. want to say, just keep inspiring people and doing your thing. I love. Mm. Yeah, man, I know how to adapt, man. I can got now survive in any climate. I'm in, I'm in Texas right now, right? It's hot as fuck. When the, um, when the, um, what's it called? What happened here? The winter storm came. I was straight. It was cold as hell. We ain't had no power. We ain't had no lights. We ain't had no water. We ain't had nothing. What that sound like? That sound like the trenches. No water, no power. No lights. It sounds like the trenches to me. You feel me? Like, folks was out here finna have a heart attack, man. It's three days with no power, no lights, no water. Now, let me tell you, some people did freeze to death and die. You feel me? God rest their soul, but I mean, I'm built different, man. That shit wasn't nothing to me, man. Like, I went, got down, got up under two covers. That shit wasn't shit. What about two row? Um, I don't see. I'll be starting to sound negative or fake. When y'all ask me opinions on business, I like to get a real. I don't like to just agree with y'all. But you know, y'all niggas pay niggas who just agree with them, so I ain't gonna say nothing. I like to try and stay optimistic and keep it positive. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to just dog nobody business out. You feel me? Like. But I do want niggas to be had a real, you feel me? Like, niggas hate me because I be keeping it real and shit. How I feel about commercial real estate? I fuck with anything real estate I fuck with. Let me, let me put y'all on some game about land, right? I be hearing niggas like, man, watches hold their value, jewelry hold its value, right? Yeah, I got a bunch of jewelry, diamonds, expensive. Real diamonds, man. These are VS. Everything is VS heavy. Heavy, you feel me? But they're not making no more land. They will never. Who making new land? That's why land is worth so much because they don't make new land. The only land they got is land that's here. So why would you invest your money in some jewelry when you can invest your money in some land? You know what I'm saying? I buy jewelry. I just buy jewelry with the extras, man. I made 75 racks today. I'm going to go buy a Cartier watch. You feel me? Like, I trade that bitch in and get the newest whatever. You know what I'm saying? But they're not making new land. You know what I'm saying? Land, it's only a certain set amount of land. You will never see new land. Land is probably one of the best investments you can make. Yeah, I'm gonna write a book soon, man. I'm gonna write a book real soon. You'll see. My shit gonna be a bestseller. Yeah, it's a lot of land in the South for sure. It's a lot of land. And it's, but let me tell you, land is going up. See, I tripped out. I should have bought some more land um, in the beginning because down here where I'm at, it was four racks an acre. Now it's 10,000 an acre. So I should have spent 400 racks on land. I'd probably be at 4 million. What's that? If I spent 400 racks, I don't know. That math is a little beyond me right now. So you're going to keep the crypto or not? What you think? Yeah, I fuck with the crypto. I'm I'm buying crypto. Listen, I put I spread my money out. Like, I, I, I'm shooting shots. If I had... 
let me tell you, if I had a million dollars, I'd never go broke because I keep trying businesses. I try ten grand at a time. Niggas, unless it's a show bet, niggas will spend five hundred thousand on a bullshit business and that shit never works. With trucking companies, the problem I'm seeing with trucking, like starting a trucking business, is niggas not reliable. Niggas ain't reliable. Niggas don't be showing up, man. Niggas drive the truck one week, won't drive the truck the next week. You know how that shit go. Can't keep a reliable driver. 400K to 1.3, that's correct, man. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You just doubled your money. Man, man, what's the fastest way to get a million dollars? The fastest way to get a million dollars. The fastest way to get a million dollars. See, you can't you can't really think of it like that. You got to think of it like this: is how you got to think of trying to get a million dollars, right? Because you know how they say shit like it's harder to keep it than to get it. That's kind of a lie. A lot of folks don't get a million dollars at once in their lifetime. So it's kind of hard to get it. It's easy to keep it for me. I feel like it's harder to get a million dollars. For a young nigga to get a million dollars is hard as fuck. Think about everybody on this line. How many niggas you know with a million dollars right now? How many niggas you personally know with a million dollars? So this is how I look at money. You're supposed to plant a seed and then you keep watering it, watering it until it grow and 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 it grow. See, if you get a million dollars fast, you kind of going to spend it fast because you never learned how to work with 10K. You never learned how to work with 20, 100, 250, 500, 750, a million. You never learned that. You never learned them skills. You never took no losses. And then had to bounce back. You never had to got down. You never got down to your, you never was up to 200, then got down to your last 30 because you lost shit. You feel me? You never, you never learn how to work with money. You don't know how to work with money. You never going to keep no money. So it's really all about going through those steps. Like I done been at, all right, so look, when I first started getting money, right? I was got down trapping, right? I got up to 30K. 30K was a lot of money to me at the time. Like 30,000, 30, I was talking about a steady $30,000 savings was a lot of money to me at the time. It never left from 30. That was my permanent whatever. So I flew out to Cali, right? I flew out to Cali and I bought about, I spent about half my money, 15 racks on loud, right? And then um, I lost that. I lost whatever pack I, I bought, I lost it in the mail. And I down there hit my knees and prayed. You know what I'm saying? I lost a couple times doing that, and I had to bounce back up. Bounce back. I was living in Atlanta. I had to shop in Atlanta again. Or I had to find a nigga to front me. You know what I'm saying? Because every time I went out there and I mailed it wrong, I got down. I would take a loss. Or if I, if I left it in it, really it wasn't me. It was leaving it in the hands of somebody who lived out there who I thought knew what they was doing, and they really didn't know what they was doing. So, goddamn, I took an L, you know what I'm saying? So, every L I took was a lesson that I learned not to do this, not to do that, you know what I'm saying? So, when I when I took, when, when the pack didn't make it, right, I called... You know how you call and you check for your package. You be like, hey, I'm looking for this box. When this box then come, boom, they'll be like, what's the track? And I'll tell them X, Y, Z. And they'll be like, um, this package was seized. You got to talk to the detective Dan about getting your package back. And I'll be like, detective Dan, they'll be like, yeah, call him at this number. So niggas don't realize Niggas really don't realize a lot of the losses I took. Like, when I had to buy myself out my deal, I might have had to spend half my money. But I never spent the money anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't even matter, man. None of this shit matter, man. I'm going to be rich regardless.
And then see when I when I take a L, I never cry. You'll never see me cry or complain about taking the L. I could care less. Cause if I take a L, most likely it's my fault. I'm gonna tell y'all some crazy shit though, right? I was in Miami one time. And I left 80 racks in the little chick car. You feel me? 80,000. I had it in a book bag. I had a Gucci book bag. I was wearing Gucci at the time. I don't fuck with Gucci no more. But she was giving me a ride. She was riding me around. You feel me? Back now, shake and bake. You feel me? And I, I had 80 racks in that book bag. I was in Miami now. And got them. I called her. Because I realized I left it in there. You feel me? And I was like, hey, Charlie, I left a book bag in your car. Can you bring it back to me? She said, nah, I got to go to work, but your book bag is safe. And she just hung up. But I wanted to be like, where the fuck you live at? I'm finna pull right down on you right now. I'm going to grab it. I catch an Uber over that motherfucker. Because, you know, I was solo down in Miami, goddamn, and I had to watch the way I was moving because I had a lot of money on me, jewelry. You feel me? And got down, she called me in the morning and was like, where you at? I'm finna bring you that book bag. And she pushed up, right? And she brought me that book bag and it wasn't one dollar missing. Not one dollar missing out of my money. It was 80 racks exactly. I was like, did you look in that book bag? And she was like, yeah, of course I look in that book bag. I know what's in there. You know what I did? I gave her five racks. I was like, huh, here go five racks. Cause I could have lost 80, you feel me? A crab ass nigga would have gave her nothing. You feel me? But that was just crazy. That could have been an 80 rack loss right there, that quick. You know what? And my heart was, nigga, my heart was finna beat out my motherfucking chest. Cause I was like, damn, I just lost an 80. Cause she didn't pick up. She went into work that night and she stopped picking up the phone. So I was like, damn, my shit gone. And I didn't know what shawty house was at. I called my little brother like, no, you know what? I didn't call my little brother because I didn't call nobody. Let me tell you why I didn't call nobody because I was embarrassed. Whoever I called would have been like, boy, you a dumbass. You feel me? But I was on drink. See, that's why I stopped doing drink. I probably stopped doing drink that night because I was like, you know what? I'm finna be alert. <laughs> but shout it brought it back. Every single dollar was in there. But you know what's so crazy? It's fucked up because Shawty died from a car accident a year later. And I was like, damn, that was a good person. Because, let me tell you, some of these goddamn females out here would have took that shit and never called me again. They would have had goddamn a new ass, new titties, new teeth. They hell did, got them, and rats in the bank, you feel me? And got them, blew my shit, all kind of design, all kind of shit. I'm talking about females who I thought was silent. I know they would have took all my shit, you feel me? But Shawty got them, she kept it real, got them. I stayed in contact with her, though. And she wasn't even like no chick I wanted to goddamn go with or nothing like that. Like, Shawty was a cool as hell. She was goddamn, when I came to Miami, she spoke Spanish. So she got down, if anybody was on the bullshit, she got down, could kind of translate. She could read the energy of the room. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just on some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 80K, if somebody find 80K, that is life changing. You feel me? You kind of got to, if you fucked up, and a nigga leave 80K in your car, you're going to reevaluate whether you're going to bring this nigga his money or not. You feel me? Because I ain't going to count. A nigga leave... <laughs> I'm going to get money, nigga, so I give a nigga his shit back. But let me tell you, I feel like 90% of people wouldn't get, them, get nobody their shit back. Spanish girl bringing it back. And guess what? You Look, look what you just said was a Spanish girl bringing it back. Shawty was Spanish. She was from uh, Hialeah. Hialeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about in Miami? 
I think that the area is called Hialeah. Hell nah, every man for itself. I mean, see, see how niggas think? <laughs> but look, let me tell you, I would've got down and tried my best to hunt Shawty down. God damn. I would've came with a vengeance. And I would've spent her shit repeatedly. Repeat, I'm talking about every day. She would've got down and had to move. You feel me? She probably would've moved and got her little condo down there. But I would have got down spent her shit. I would have needed some type of blood for losing that 80. You feel me? That 80. Back then, that 80 would have been a big loss because I was at 400. So that would have took me down to 320. Nigga, no. That would have been a big loss. You feel me? That's almost a 100K loss. But a nigga would have had to spend her shit again and again and again. Bet you can't name my profile. Yeah, life is crazy, man, because I swear I thought I lost that shit. I don't know many all kind of places. I was on, um, when I um, when I go work out and I'm out of town, right? I um, This is how lazy people is. Because somebody could have came up. I had 100000 in a Fendi book bag, right? And I'm at a hotel. Nigga, I'm at nigga, I'm in Atlanta on the south side at a hotel, right? So you know the number of niggas everywhere. You feel me? Like, I don't know if niggas recognize me or not, but goddamn, I'm walking with a hoodie on. I'm pretty sure my hair hanging out. I'm pretty sure niggas recognize me. But I didn't want to leave my jewelry and my own um, money in the room. Cause I'm like, man, a nigga might got down come kick my motherfucking dough while I'm gone. And I wanted to get me a workout in, you feel me? I wanted to go run for an hour. So I put a hundred thousand and I had about three hundred thousand worth of jewelry in the Fendi book bag. So I go to the gym, right? And I see the book bag right next to the treadmill while I'm running. I lift some weights. I work out about an hour and fifteen minutes. Then I left, right? And then realize I didn't take my book bag with me. So I'm in my room for about two hours. And my book bag with all that money and jewelry is in the gym. And then, by the time it's time for my show, I realize, like, damn, where my jewelry at? I'm thinking about my money. My jewelry way more than my money because the jewelry more than the, the jewelry costs more than, I mean, the jewelry is more than the money. And the insurance might try and goddamn not pay a nigga or something. So I got down, run down there, my shit's still there. It's crazy, ain't it? Lazy ass motherfuckers at the guy in a hotel didn't want to work out, so they missed they come up. You feel me? She crazy, ain't it? Yeah, I done man, I done seen some crazy shit, man. Nigga done broke in broke in one of my goddamn vehicles right while I was out of town and just happened to take a bag with 400 racks worth of jewelry in it. But see, when you get when you get a lot of money and you moving fast, this is the type of shit that happens. That's why I try not to move too fast no more, you feel me? I try and move calculated now. So I try and move calculated, you feel me? Like, I don't want to move fast. I want to move smart. I think Ross said that. Ross said some real nigga shit. Man, listen. Listen to old niggas, man. Old niggas know. I'm going to say older. Listen to older niggas, man. Older niggas done made the mistakes you ain't got to make. That's what I'm good at doing. I, I'm good at not making mistakes other niggas made. Niggas say stupid shit all the time. Like, you got to bump your head yourself to learn. No, you you watch another nigga bump his head so you don't bump yours. What kind of nigga want to make a mistake? You feel me? If you see, like, a nigga who punching everybody in the face and you go up and get punched in the face, you a dumbass. You supposed to go up and know he's finna punch you in the face and punch him in his face. So that's what I do. I learn from other niggas' mistakes. I don't learn from my own mistakes. I don't make the same mistakes niggas make. 
I learn from other niggas' mistakes. You feel me? Like I'm not I'm not trying to take all these losses and shit like that. And you know it's so fucked up on the road. You got to choose between smoking loud or having your fire. Because if you get caught with both of them, that's, that, make the, that make it a felony. When you got weed and you got your strap, the weed make the strap a felony, whether it's registered or not. So when you go into these country towns, you got to choose between having weed or having a fire. So guess what? You lame as fuck if you choose weed over protecting your life. You feel me? I smoke at home, but on the road, I probably can't smoke no more. You feel me? Like, it's too many charges. Too many. I don't feel like taking them charges no more. You feel me? Like, and then I'm not. I don't want to put my niggas in a position to take them charges. What's the point? If everybody around you got felonies, can't nobody do nothing. You feel me? And when your car gets stopped and they run names, they see everybody got a record. You feel me? They pulling everybody out. You feel me? You want you want that car to look square, even though everybody is with the shit. You want everybody in that car background to be clean, so police don't think nothing going on. You know what I'm saying? The best thing to do is to fly under the radar. You feel me? So I choose to start smoking at home, and when I ride, I got to ride clean. I mean, I got to ride clean. You feel me? Like, I can't I can't have both. Both of them make it a felony. I was... Why was you locked up for them couple hours a couple months ago? I got locked up because I was on the way to Tampa. I was on the way to Tampa and got down. We got pulled over by some thirsty police, and they found weed and guns in the car in Florida. In Florida is the um. 